Yo, what's going on guys, Hennis here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks I have to optimize your Premiere Pro performance. The first thing you should do right off the bat is make sure that you've updated all of your Windows drivers and your graphics card drivers. You can update your Windows drivers by going down to search and typing in check for updates. And your graphics card drivers will depend on whatever graphics card you have. You can get those from your manufacturer's website. Now within Premiere Pro, the first thing we're gonna do is go to file, project settings and click general. In here, make sure under video rendering and playback, you have your renderer set to your GPU acceleration. By default, you may have it set to Mercury playback engine software only. And this is gonna cause a lot of playback lag and probably really increase your render times too. Your GPU acceleration option may not be the exact same as mine. It'll vary depending on your computer and your graphics card. So if you have this option, make sure it's checked. Then you can click okay. Now for the next step, we're gonna go to edit, preferences and click audio. In the audio tab, make sure you have mute input during timeline recording checked. Now this is really only gonna to apply to people who are recording the microphone directly in Premiere. So if you're doing a voiceover, for example, it will actually play your voiceover back like a half second after you say it. Just makes it really difficult to speak and keep your flow, so keep this checked. Next, we'll go to the audio hardware tab. And here, make sure you have your correct input and output sound devices checked. Your input device will be whatever microphone you're using and your output will be wherever you wanna be hearing your playback. Next, we'll come down to auto save. This doesn't really help with performance at all, but make sure that you have auto save turned on. I forget what the defaults are, but I've changed mine to automatically save every five minutes and save a maximum project versions of 200. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but the project files don't take up a lot of space and it'll be a huge fail safe in case Premiere or your computer crashes. Next, we'll come all the way down to the media tab. And here I like to have default media scaling instead of having it at none, setting it to set to frame size. Now this is really beneficial if you're dealing with media that was recorded at different resolutions in the same sequence. So if I had this set to none, I'll give you an example. Let's say I create a new sequence using this 1440p clip. You'll notice that this 1440p clip fills the entire window. But if I drag in this same clip that I just recorded the shorter version of at 1080p, you can see that the 1080p clip doesn't fill the entire window. And the same thing would happen in reverse too. If I created the sequence using the 1080p clip and then dragged in the 1440p clip, the 1440p clip would be zoomed in. So again, to fix this, go to edit, preferences, media, and change default media scaling to set to frame size and click okay. Now, when you drag the 1440p clip onto the 1080p sequence, it'll properly fit in your playback window. So next we're gonna go back to edit, preferences, media cache. And this is a big one. I'm sure this is causing a lot of lag for a lot of people. Now, not everybody's gonna have this luxury, but it's good practice to actually store your media cache files on a drive that's separate from your main operating system. This will be the location that Premiere pulls all your media data from. So it's important for this drive to have really fast read write speeds, which is why it's also ideal to have a dedicated drive that's just used for this media cache. Now I actually keep my media cache in the same drive that I have all my games installed on. And that works for me and is totally fine because odds are I don't have a game open when I'm also editing in Premiere. But again, if you don't don't have an extra drive just for Premiere cache files, it's not a big deal because a big thing that's still really going to help is removing old media cache files. And you can have this done automatically by deleting cache files older than 90 days or whatever day you want to set. But I prefer to do it manually, which is why I have this checked. So if you want to feel a little bump in Premiere's performance, you can actually remove all your media cache files by clicking delete right here. And then make sure you're deleting only the unused media cache files and click OK. Now that'll take a little bit of time depending on how many media cache files you have saved up, but hopefully that should improve your performance a lot. Next, we're going to come over to the memory tab. And I like to set the RAM reserved for other applications to the lowest possible value. And then I have optimized rendering set for performance. And next we'll go to the playback tab. And here, make sure you uncheck enable Mercury transmit. Now, from what I understand, this is only useful if you have an external monitor where you're watching the playback of your premiere, but doing the editing on a separate monitor. So if I was a hardcore editor, I might have a separate TV directly above my monitor to the left and right. That's just showing playback in full screen. Odds are most people aren't using that, but premiere is constantly checking for that external monitor. So this is something you can uncheck to help improve performance. And that is actually it for preferences. So we can click OK and close out of this window. Now, if you're experiencing a lot of lag and buffering when watching your playback, you can actually click on settings and change your playback or paused resolution. Right now, my playback resolution is playing this video in full. But if I change this to a quarter and do the same thing for paused resolution, it'll make watching back this footage much smoother. And you can also come in here and make sure you have high quality playback unchecked. Now, I'm not having this issue right now, but I'm sure you've noticed when editing in Premiere that you have colored bars above different sections of media in your timeline. For me, both these clips are green, which means Premiere isn't going to have any issues playing these back. There's also yellow, which means you might experience a bit of buffering. And then there's red, which means you're going to experience a lot of lag. Usually you'll see the red in a part of your video where you've applied a lot of effects. Now you can make this playback smoother by selecting the portion of your timeline that's red, then coming up to sequence and clicking render in and out. And this will render just that specific portion of your timeline and make the playback infinitely smoother. Another tip that's really helpful is if you've applied a lot of effects to your timeline and you're experiencing some playback buffering, you can come up here to your playback toolbar and disable all effects. And if you don't see this option here, you can click the plus sign on the right-hand side and drag the FX button here onto your toolbar. And my final tip is make sure you go up to window, 
and you uncheck Lumetri Color and Lumetri Scopes. You can see when I have this window open, it provides a bunch of fancy color information about my video and media in my timeline. And unless you're somebody who knows what the heck all this means, odds are you don't need it. So just make sure you have this window closed. And last, but certainly not least, I have a tip for all of my Windows Premiere users who have an NVIDIA graphics card. So go to your desktop, right click, and click NVIDIA Control Panel. Once it's open, go to the Adjust Image Settings with Preview. Make sure you have Use the Advanced Image 3D Settings checked, and then click Take Me There. Then go up to the Program Settings tab, and from the drop-down window, choose Adobe Premiere. And in here, we're gonna change five total settings. Next to CUDA GPUs, make sure that you have Use Global Setting All checked. And if you scroll down next to OpenGL Rendering GPU, make sure you have your graphics card selected. Scroll down a little more and set Texture Filtering Quality to High Performance, and make sure Texture Filtering Trilinear Optimization is turned on and make sure threaded optimization is turned on as well. Then come down to the bottom right and click apply. And you'll most likely have to restart Premiere in order to see those changes take effect, but hopefully that should help with your Premiere performance in a big way. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I like bringing you all sorts of content creation streaming tips here on the Pro Tutorials channel. If you found this helpful or have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.